before after a decision analysis has been carried out. Um, in other words, when a decision analysis is complete, cost sum is used and the cost effectiveness of the alternatives is there to mind. So we just can run um, cost effectiveness analysis after um, a decision analysis has been carried out. Okay? So there are some uh, wrong or misused um, situations in medical care uh, that um, cost effectiveness analysis is used. And they are. There are three uh, different ways when uh, that cost effectiveness analysis is misused. The first one is in the absence of data on cost and effectiveness. With no data about costs and effectiveness, we can't uh, call uh, we can't call uh, an alternative uh, cost effectiveness. Uh, the second one is when the effectiveness is demo is demonstrated, but we don't have uh, data about costs. And we need an explicit information about costs um, to ensure that an intervention is cost effective. So we should just have um, data about the effectiveness, but with no data about cost, we can't call this, uh, this uh, alternative cost effective. And the third one is, in the restricted circumstance where the intervention is cost saving, uh, but what, what, what does it alternative is just less expensive but if we don't have um, if you we can't determine if it cost effective we can't call it uh, call it cost effective so this restriction derives from from the origin of cost effective analysis in business economics that is when a situation is just cost saving so, in medicine, uh, the term cost effective should be used when an intervention provides both uh, a benefit at an acceptable cost. So, if you have an intervention that is less expensive or is beneficial at an acceptable cost, we can call it uh, cost effective. Any questions? No. No. Okay. okay. So we have four criteria for calling an intervention cost effective in uh, two places. You can, you can take a look at the table uh, 12 to on page on the left side of, of the page 91. So um, we can call uh, an intervention cost effective when it is less costly and at least is effective. For example, if I have, uh, let me talk about my last project that is about operation of two different breast implants. If I have a breast implant A and it is uh, less costly than uh, in a, a breast implant B, I mean, if the A is less costly and has the same uh, effectiveness, can ensure that the uh, breast implant A is cost is most cost effective than the breast implant B. Um, the other situation is when uh, an intervention is more effective and more costly but uh, with an added benefit uh, to the patient. For example, if the, the breast implant A is more costly than the B, but if it has uh, more, uh, it's, it's more effective, we can ensure that it is uh, cost effective. 
and the third one is when an observation is less effective and less costly and with the added benefit of the alternative, not worth to the added cost. And the, and the, the fourth one is when it is cost saving, uh, which means better out. Okay? So, uh, just a minute. So, how can we can we share um, cost effectiveness? Cost effectiveness is measured as a ratio of costs to effectiveness. And effectiveness is measured by qualities, which means quality at adjusted life years. For example, uh, how uh, after a patient undergo uh, reconstructive, uh, a breast reconstructive surgery after a cancer, uh, how many years um, could this patient have uh, after this procedure? So, uh, this, this amount of years with a good quality of life is called quality adjusted life years, okay? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, two different ways for measuring this cost effectiveness ratio. The first one is uh, uh, average cost effectiveness ratio, and the second is incremental or marginal cost effectiveness ratio, which means uh, each one. Uh, average cost effectiveness ratio is a ratio that, uh, that's measured by dividing the cost of procedures by a measure of effectiveness with regardless to its alternatives. It's very important. So we are not uh, concerned about the alternatives, just the total amount. And the incremental or marginal cost effectiveness ratio is an estimate of the cost per unit of effectiveness of using one treatment in preference to another. So in this case, we are comparing, uh, not comparing exactly, but we are focused on one alternative of treatment. Okay? For example, uh, if I have a patient undergoing a bone transplantation, and if we assume that, well, let's suppose that this this uh, intervention costs um, two hundred thousand dollars, and the added quality of business life years is three point thirty-two. Uh, let's suppose that is five years. So how can I how can I measure the cost effectiveness uh, of this alternative? Uh, I I should take total amount that is two thousand two hundred thousand dollars and divided by uh, the quality adjusted life years that my case is five years. So it would be fifth. Uh, fifth, the cost effectiveness loss ratio would be fifth. Okay? Right. So, we need to be very careful um, in this situation. Uh, in many cases, doing nothing is an implicit alternative. So, but doing nothing usually has costs and effects and should be very, very relevant into accounting to the cost effectiveness analysis. So let's talk a little bit more about costs and terminology. So uh, may I ask a quick question? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Rafael Vistero. 
So when using this uh, equation, can you specifically use it for a specific treatment? I see the example that you told about was about the entire uh, bundle of treatment for leukemia or something like that, a bone marrow transplant. But if, um, if a specific treatment regimen requires, you know, uh, two different types of regimens, like, you know, both chemotherapy and radiation, how are you really adjusting for the effectiveness when there's two different modalities of delivering it? So, in my opinion, the best, uh, the best um, course of action should be uh, estimate each cost effectiveness analysis, I mean, for uh, the chemotherapy, and their transportation. That is it? Okay. Okay? So, let's talk about a bit of the terminology for costs. Um, opportunity costs are cost consists of production cost and indirect, and indirect costs. So, we, we have here two different uh, approaches. Uh, production costs which means there are the direct costs and the indirect costs, which is each one. Production costs are the actual amount of resources consumed in the production of the good or providing a service. And indirect costs are the monetary values of other resources in the alternative. So, Let's suppose that a patient is going to a hospital to get a uh, uh, x-ray. So, to get this x-ray, um, uh, he should pay an amount. Let's suppose, Rafael, uh, just yes. a second. I think there is a lot of disturbance, someone typing, I think. Because I'm recording this conversation and meeting, so it would be good if uh, we have less background noise. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can continue. So, let's suppose that a patient is going to a hospital to get a uh, x-ray. And let's suppose again that this x-ray costs us um, one, $1,000. So, mm. the patient, uh, the direct cost for the patient is the total amount that he's paying, uh, which means $1,000. $1, but, mm. Um, to go to the hospital, uh, he needs to get off of his job, which means he's not working, and because of that, he's not receiving money. So, he has an indirect cost for this. Let's suppose that he receives um, 100 per hour. So, if he spends one hour, he's not being paid for 100 and it's a cost for the patient and should be um, taken to an account to, to the total of the cost for the procedure. Right? Right. Any questions? No. No. Okay. Yeah. So, when we are covering uh, a cost-effective analysis, we need to be very careful to, to provide uh, the perspective of the study. So, the societal perspective uh, seeks to determine the total cost to all payers for all persons. Um, this way, the cost is offset by reductions in lifetime uh, medical care and offset by increased economic productivity due to enhanced... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, just... Just let me go back. Uh, costs depend on the perspective. So, um, this perspective uh, depends on who is seeing it. Uh, it could be the insurance company, the hospital, the patient, the society. So, if, therefore, it's very important to state the perspective of the cost factors analysis since the perspective determines which costs should be included and what economic outcomes are being considered benefits. The most usual perspective of analysis are the societal and program perspectives. The, I, 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 should mean, uh, I should say that the most uh, usual perspective is the societal perspective. Yes. So, 
the societal perspective seeks to determine the total cost uh, for payers and persons. So the cost is offset by reduction in lifetime and and by increasing the economic productivity due to any hazard life expect expectancy. So production uh, production costs are obviously the cost is to manufacture or develop a good or provide a service. Their components um, can be seen on table um, 12 for on page 93. So we for the components of production costs we have direct costs, uh, overhead and inducing costs. You can take a look at it. Page 93, not Yeah, page 93. Uh, not the book, but uh, the PDF. Yeah, the book uh, page is 174. 174, exactly. Oh, 174. Yeah. So, when we are talking about indirect yeah. costs, uh, they include the costs of lost wages and productivity and other values of resource and time. Um, fear, inconvenience, and pain are also indirect costs, but it's difficult to, be, to, be, uh, to incorporate this, those variables into the analysis. So they are incorporated in cost utility analysis, which is the measure of the outcomes in uh, which the measure of the outcomes is a utility measure that takes into account the effects of the treatments on quality of life. So, production cost is readily measured directly because it requires students that involve high expertise in accounting. So, because of that, uh, charge or payment data are almost always using medical cost factors and analysis in substitution to uh, production costs. So the charge is the amount of the hospital clinic or a physician that attempt to recoup good or service. It's the total amount that the hospital or clinic is paying for that that procedure. And Estimating charge or payment is also very, very difficult. There are few centralized sources of cost uh, or payment data for nationally representative samples. And charges may vary from place to place or change rapidly, very fast, over time. So, the schedule for Medicare reimbursement for hospitalization may be used to estimate hospital costs. And hospital discharge diagnosis are reimbursed according to the diagnosis-related group. Information on the amount of that Medicare reimburses for each uh, diagnosis-related group is, pub is published and access, uh, accessible but you need to figure out which database is the most appropriate to your study. So there are a lot of databases uh, available on the internet and you should be very careful to, to choose the most appropriate for your study. Mm -hmm. Payment made by Medicare and private insurance companies don't include those payments uh, made to surgeons, radiologists, and the team. So these, uh, these costs should be included separately into the total amount that uh, the, the intervention requires. Okay. okay. And charge data based on a sample of patients from one hospital cannot be represented. So, unless the service is large, the estimate of cost can be statistically unstable. 
So when we are using a sample based on fewer than uh, 100 reservations, uh, the medium charge is a better measure to be used. So when, that, when data aren't symmetrical, we should exclude the lowest and the highest charge before computing the median. For example, uh, if I have a survey of 100 observation, we should exclude the highest cost and the lowest cost to ensure um, a more stable um, statistical result. Yes, that's right. So, when information or indirect costs are available, they should be incorporated into the cost effectiveness analysis. So, let me talk about a very important topic in, in this, this chapter, that is the discounting costs. The value of a dollar now is greater than the value of a dollar in, in one year by now. From now, so this is logical because when uh, we can use today's money to invest and receive an enhanced amount. For example, you invest in, in saving accounts. So, this preference in today's money is called time preference for money. In economic analysis, time preference for money estimates discounting future costs. So, discounting um, adjusts future costs and expresses uh, all costs in the present value. And sometimes a treatment is long-term treatment. And because of that, costs needed to be adjusted in time because of the time preference for money. Uh, so, the discount rate is usually the rate of return on private investments adjusted for inflation. Um, some authors suggest a reasonable rate of discounting uh, and test the, sens the sensitivity of the conclusions, including zero as a discount rate. Um, there are two authors, uh, they are Weston and Feinberg, they suggest uh, a ratio between 4 and 6 percent as a reasonable uh, rate of discounting. And another two authors called Surgeon and Williams, they suggest a ratio between 3 and 5 percent as a reasonable rate of discounting. So, as I'm getting used to, to read a lot of studies, uh, based, based on cost effective analysis, what I could assure uh, you, uh, the, the most traditional or the most uh, used uh, ratio is uh, a discount ratio between 3 and 5 percent. So, what is inflation? Uh, oh. Rafael? Uh, yes? I think Wynne has some questions. Uh, I'm not yeah. here. Her. Could, you, could you talk yeah. a little bit? Hi, Rafa. Oh, yes. Hi, Rafa. Yes, uh, it's better now. Uh, every cost effective analysis, we should have a discount rate, is that right? Um, that's a very good uh, question. So, we, uh, to perform a uh, very uh, methodol, met, I mean, very methodical cost-effective analysis. We should include oh. this this discount rate. Oh, okay. It, but but there is a. I, I'm gonna talk about this um, in one minute. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, what is the inflation rate? The inflation rate uh, measures the enhance in goods and service price. So, if the inflation for future medical costs is the same as the general inflation for goods and services, inflation can be ignored in cost-effective analysis because the payment 
or inflated filter costs would be money that have inflated at the same time. So there is no sense to to use inflation if the, the rates are the same. So going back to the wins question, uh, I should say that we always need to to use uh, discount rate uh, in our studies. Uh, mainly because uh, the treatments are long-term treatments and money can vary uh, during the time. So I think it's reasonable to always use the discount ratio. Okay? Yes. So differences between inflation rate and medical care costs are the general inflation and are usually ignored. So it's assumed that they are the same uh, inflation for uh, medical care costs and the general inflation. We can assume that they are the same, and <clears throat> we can. Uh, it's it's it makes uh, our study easy to be easier to be performed. So when discounting costs, health benefits. For, ex that they, uh, for example, years of life saved um, should be discounted at the same time, at, at the same rate. Because lives, years of life saved in older utilities are being valued in dollars, and dollars are discounted to their present value, it's necessary to discount benefits at the same rate. Okay? So, uh, if benefits are being discounted, a sensitive analysis should always be done. Sensitive analysis is the, uh, the next chapter of this book. And I don't know if somebody is going to cover this chapter. Do you know, Jim, about that? Uh, actually, uh, we have uh, covered uh, the... Rest of uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, we, we have. Yes, okay. and uh, yeah, just to add, because we are talking about what we have covered and not, uh, actually there is one sheet in the Google folder which talks about what we have covered. And uh, since last meeting, we have started to record our meetings. So one can access if uh, uh, anyone is missing the meeting. Though the earlier yes. ones are not available, but then uh, we can go over uh, them again together if required. Okay? Okay. So that is it, people. Uh, if you have any questions on courses, please go ahead and ask me. Yeah. So uh, really nice, Rafael, uh, you presented uh, this chapter once again. Thanks for that. And yeah. it was indeed uh, nice that you gave examples and so on. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, I think it is pretty clear uh, what we heard just now. Unless anyone has other questions or any other information, to share with because uh, let me tell you maybe Beryl is uh, new to the group but uh, Beryl the idea of this uh, group meeting and workshop is uh, is to share uh, with the team and with the members it, it is not like anyone here is expert in uh, doing uh, these analysis uh, but then everyone has their own uh, expertise with certain topics related to cost effectiveness and decision analysis. And maybe through reading and reading book chapters and so on. So here in this uh, group discussions, we just go over book chapters or maybe published papers and so on. And then try to discuss and understand uh, more on the the methodology of decision analysis and cost effectiveness uh, analysis. So uh, please 
feel free to give your opinions and whatever you know about apart from uh, I mean uh, sharing any other things that uh, we know with you so exactly yeah uh, Raphael can I ask one question yeah sure go ahead please so there's a you're talking about discounting the benefits to the patient if we were doing some kind of cost-effective analysis on something that is not easily easily measurable like um, differences in pain um, like that, that's a little bit arbitrary, especially with people picking their different pain scales. How are you able to exactly discount the benefits of something like that? Mm, to be very, very um, honestly, I don't know. In this, in this particular case, I really don't know. Uh, so, uh, just to understand, what, did, what you would you suggest, people? So, uh, she, I think if yeah, I'm uh, understanding it correctly, you're talking about the uh, outcome measures that you are looking uh, for are the pain uh, scales, right? Yes. And uh, your question is because pain scales are not that reliable, how you use them in the uh, decision analysis or cost effectiveness analysis, is that right? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, the thing is, uh, see, uh, cost effectiveness analysis and decision analysis, these are like based on whatever data is available. So the most way we can avoid uh, any such uh, method of outcome measure uh, bias because of the outcome method of measurement used in the studies from which we are going to take the data. The best we can do is to select the sources that have used the uh, most widely accepted, reliable and uh, validated method of measuring pain scale. Do you get what okay. I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. I only see that as one option. And then parallelly also taking the uh, values maybe from other uh, sources to include in the sensitivity analysis so that you can adjust for whatever uh, uh, the variation that is already existing in the available literature. Yes, I think you should use the different, uh, the different data that you have. Uh, in putting account to the sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity uh, uh, analysis is the, the tool to help you in this situation. Okay, okay, thank you. Because it, it can vary the, 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 the ratios in the data. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Any other question? No, that's it. Okay, everybody. Thank you for the attention for this presentation. Okay. And hope we can share more, more information. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So maybe uh, just for uh, next meeting, uh, maybe I'll try to cover uh, one or two guidelines in the coming uh, meeting. I'll uh, schedule one for the next week. Okay, maybe okay. we can try okay. to go over the existing guidelines so that we know how one should report and that helps us how we should design our studies. Okay? Exactly. Okay, okay. nice. Bye bye people. Nice. Have a good day. day. Yeah. For you too. Good night to you. Bye Beryl, bye Rafael. Bye bye. Bye Vin. Good night, thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.